Without um, any further ado, I'd like to invite the next speaker of the morning, Anjana Anand, uh, who will be speaking on an interesting thought experiment, so to say, if we were to do away with dance of all sort today, if there was a ban on dance, then who would care or who should care? I invite Anjana. Namaskaram, good morning to everyone. It's, um, it's always an interesting thing to talk after JC because most of the audience is usually floating somewhere in space and I get the honor of bringing them crashing back down to the ground. Thank you Apurva for allowing me to share some thoughts on the topic. If we were to stop dancing, who would care? And it's quite ironic that uh, I should be getting this topic because I was forced to stop dancing this past year for some time. And uh, thinking about this topic made me also um, think personally about how I view dance and what I care most about dancing. And the funny thing was what I missed least was performing on stage. And what I missed most was actually the practice of dance, um, the teaching, uh, the interacting, the interacting with my fellow dancers. So it was more the experience of being a dancer which I finally missed. And I felt if if this troubled me so much and left such a vacuum for me, then how would how would it be if we all collectively stopped dancing? How would it affect people around us? If we take uh, this topic and we replace the word dance, we can do it with any other subject. Um, if cricket was banned. Um, who would care, or if people stopped making movies overnight, um, how would it uh, affect anyone? But I don't think the cricket or entertainment industry would ever be having such a conference, <laughs> because I think they are quite um, secure in the knowledge that they add some value to society. And somewhere along the way we have lost the confidence in dancers, have lost the confidence and conviction that we add some kind of value to society. And so I throw open a, uh, throw open a few questions. Um, firstly, who are we dancing for? What is the context of performance? Are dancers living in their own little isolated worlds in self-indulgence? And in what way are we connecting with the rest of the artistic community? So to answer the first two questions, uh, who we are dancing for and the context of performance, if we rewind about uh, two or three centuries, I think the answer was very simple. Because as JC said, the uh, temple dancer was uh, partaking in the rituals in the temple. And people who came to the temple to see the dance were used to the sights and sounds of the art form. And perhaps because, because of the lack of uh, other entertainment, they would be familiar with the art forms which were popular in that region. And in the uh, court, the dancer was a, a sign of prestige of the king. Um, she was there to perform for the king and for the dignitaries. And then there was a whole community of dancers whose livelihood was based completely on their dance and music. Now, we, uh, just fast forward to the 21st century here. We are grappling with the dilemma that we have this beautiful dance form, but we are performing it in a completely different context. So this is the topic for another discussion, but leads up to my third question, which is, are dancers like lonely planets just circling in their own orbit with no connection to the rest of the solar system? And uh, the answer, I think, is a resounding no. And that's not because of the dancer. That's because the dance form doesn't allow us to do that. A Bharatanatyam performance is not just about the movement of the limbs. You have music, literature, poetry, the aharya, the lighting, everything that contributes to a performance. So we just are not allowed to be orbiting on our own. 
we actually connect to the rest of the community and I'm proud to say that we've actually created an industry of artists around us coming together and collaborating. And I think dancers were, the, were collaborating long before the word collaboration became popular because the art form just demanded it. So as, um, as a community, we are now providing a livelihood for a community of artists who come and help us in our performance. And this includes the musicians, the lighting designer, the makeup artists, the whole textile industry. And today, that is becoming, um, the, the, the network is spreading because thematic performances have become popular. Uh, we recently saw a um, performance by Malaka Thari, the handloom, where she was working with the weavers in Kanchipuram. Um, a few years ago at Sahradiya, we did a production called Don Quixote, where we brought a live performance from the scratch, from a text. And uh, we were working with about 60 musicians from different backgrounds. There was the Panchavadi from Kerala, there was the chamber orchestra, the classical musicians. We worked with a young and talented sculptor who brought a live assets. And it just made me feel very proud that we are able to bring these traditions together and showcase them on stage. A little contribution from our side to keeping this heritage alive. I think the second way in which we contribute to societies is more intangible and you can't see it and therefore sometimes it goes unnoticed. That is believing in the transformative power of dance. If we individually believe that art has the power to uh, make us more sensitive to beauty, more empathetic, to get in touch with our emotional self, then um, I think Bharatanatyam is one such discipline which fosters that. I actually feel also very happy and proud that we are in a way custodians of a rich cultural and spiritual heritage that we have inherited. Just look at everything that Bharatanatyam has to offer within it. There's mythology, there's storytelling, um, there is the Aharya, there is sculpture, there is architecture. You can bring in almost any allied discipline into the performing art and we do that through the visual discipline. So in a way you're keeping alive an ancient tradition and keeping it alive for the audience through the visual which has a very, um, a very more prominent uh, impact than if it is resting in books or uh, in libraries. So we're making it a living tradition by passing it on this way. Uh, in a world where we, the sensory overload today is through media and through gadgets, uh, it's so refreshing to go into a performance and to have human interaction real time with, with the performer on stage where she takes you into the world of imagination and where there is complete sensory experience. And I think the, the emphasis here is on experience, the experience of being alive to your emotions um, uh, in a real time way. And it, it looks like society is moving or civilization is moving towards a time when that kind of human interaction is going to be depleting. And hopefully that vacuum creates the need for people wanting dance and music and the arts in their lives. So what we spoke about up to now is only the performance aspect. I think more than the performance is uh, what goes into the learning of an art form. For all of us here who have been through the journey, I think most of the values that we've learned in life has been through art and music. At least it has been for me. I think all the confidence, the idea of dedication, of uh, working on something, of uh, of uh, being sensitive to, um, to very little things that make a difference, to, to attention to detail. All that I've learned, I think, in the process of my years in music and dance. Um, yeah, this, I think this somewhat sums up uh, what I would say is our contribution to society, at least uh, from a personal point of view. And um, I'll just end by, by telling you that I think it's important that you look at how you care about your art form. And if you have the confidence and the conviction that you have something important to say 
and that you are a vehicle for the art form rather than the projection of the artist, then there is no question about the value and contribution to uh, Bharatanatyam or to any classical form to society. Thank you.